Now, not only is this 12 millimeter f2 lens one of the sharpest lenses I own, it's also the best astrophotography lens I own, and it has some of the best close focus ability of any lens I own. It's one of the best wide angle lenses I own, and it's also one of the cheapest lenses I own. So there's a whole bunch of reasons to love this little 12 millimeter F2 lens. And if you're out there looking around, you're gonna find there's a Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 lens, and there's also a Samyang 12 millimeter F2 lens. These are actually the exact same lens made by the same company, just branded with the two different brands they use. So when you're looking around trying to find the best deal on this lens, I suggest you look at both the Rokinon and the Samyang model because they get you identical image quality. And I will put my best price links in the description down below to both the Rokinon and the Samyang. And those links allow you to price check between a number of the top suppliers by just clicking through and instantly seeing who's got the best price on which model. So definitely do that little bit of shopping around before you decide to get the Rokinon or the Samyang because as I said, they are the same lens. Now, one thing that does scare people off about this lens sometimes is the fact that it is a manual focus, manual aperture lens. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of that because manually focused focusing an ultra wide angle lens is so easy that, that there is a very deep depth of field or depth of the area that it is in focus when using ultra wide angle lenses. And on this lens, it means you can basically set the aperture of F4 just on the ring on the side of the lens and set your focusing distance to about one meter and everything from about one meter to infinity is going to be in focus. And you actually don't have to touch the aperture or the focus ring again. So. Just know if you don't want to mess with the manual focus, there are ways to get around this and get perfectly good results in both photo and video without going and constantly manually focusing. Now, when you are using the manual focus lens, it is really well dampened. It is just an absolute pleasure to use. And if you're using that sort of really deep depth of field with the F4 and the focus to about one meter that I'm talking about, the only time you might want to do something a bit different is when you get a really close focus photo. And, and this thing is great at close focus and creates a really serene real image when you use close focus. And when you're doing that, the really well dampened focus ring just makes it really easy to kind of tune in that image. And it is quite a pleasure to use and it makes you feel really in touch with your camera and the photos that you're taking. So I do really enjoy the manual focus use on this. The aperture ring is clicked and it has the numbers on the side so you know exactly what aperture you're in. You click into that, it doesn't get bumped out easily because the clicks click and hold it in place. So I find both the aperture ring and the smooth autofocus, well dampened ring, very easy to use. and just a really nice lens to use. It really kind of makes you feel more in touch with your photos or videos you're creating by actually using those manual focus and uh, manual aperture rings. It's just a nice lens to use. Now, unlike a lot of lenses nowadays, it does come with the lens hood, which I think is really nice. It comes with the lens cap. It's got a very interesting design, the way the lens actually sort of flares out at the top. And that, that gives way to a 67 millimeter filter mount. Now, the nice thing about this design is it gets the filter up and out of the way of the sort of wide angle or bulbous wide angle lens. And what that means is you can use filters on this and the filters aren't going to vignette or end up sort of in the image, which can happen with some ultra wide angle lenses. So. It's a clever design to sort of get that away. And then you can just use either a protective filter or you can use a diffusion filter or an ND filter, whatever sort of you want. And you're not gonna have any problems with that filter showing up in your image. Now, although there is a bit of plastic in the build of this lens, it is very high quality plastic. It feels very good. And there is importantly a metal mount. So the metal mount is probably the most important thing on the lens to be metal. You've got a metal mount, so that's not gonna wear down or break. And it is really well machined and well polished and it fits whatever camera system you're using really well. Now, my favorite thing to do with this lens is astrophotography. And that is why I bought the lens. That is why the way I use the lens all the time. And if you are interested in, in doing astrophotography, the results you get out of this compared to the kit lens or even lenses that I own that cost over $1,000 is really unbelievable, night and day. And there are a number of advantages to this specific lens and manual focus, manual aperture lenses in general for astrophotography and also astro time lapse. Now, the first thing is, uh, and this is really important about this lens, when you look on the side of it, you're going to get the measurements of what you're focusing to. So you've got your focus to infinity, you've got your focus to one meter, half meter, one foot, what have you. 
This lens is dead on accurate, meaning when you are trying to focus on stars, all you got to do is turn the ring to the focus to infinity. You now you know you're going to be focused to infinity, and you know that those, uh, sh those stars are going to be sharp and in focus, which is really, really important. And that is really easy to do when you have a properly calibrated manual focus lens. It is very difficult to do on an autofocus lens. The other thing is when you have an autofocus lens, uh, particularly most of the modern autofocuses, which are focused by wire, when you turn the camera off, you can actually lose your focus and you have to refocus. Uh, with this lens, or even if you just bump, just gently bump that sort of manual focus ring on one of these electronic focus cameras, it's just going to change the focus. So there's all kinds of ways that you can end up having your entire night of photography out of focus. And it can be very hard through the viewfinder to tell whether you got those stars tuned in and sharp or not. With this lens, you just set it to infinity and you know that you're going to have everything in sharp and in focus. And every once in a while, you might want to just check back and make sure that you've got it set to infinity. Beyond that, if you're afraid you are going to bump it in a dark environment, which can happen sometimes, all you need to do is get a little bit of tape and you can just tape that focus ring down so it never moves. So now you are dead on on infinity, you know you've got sharp stars, and you're going to have no issues there. Then the other thing you're going to do when you're shooting the stars is just going to set the aperture to f2. Because the aperture is clicked, it sits at f2 and it stays at f2. Even a lens that is $1,000, $1,500, I have much more expensive lenses in my collection that are supposed to be great for astrophoto and astro time lapse. But because of the manual focus and manual aperture on this lens, this is a better lens, it gets better results, and I find it to be actually just as sharp as my $1,000 plus lenses. So my absolute number one recommendation for astro photo, astro time lapse. And although it is my number one recommendation for the astro stuff, it's also a great walk around lens. It's great for walk around video. It's great for walk around photo. It gets some really cool, interesting images with its ultra wide angle. And I pick it, particularly think with walk around video, the lens is not stabilized, but 12 millimeters is quite wide, which means that when you move your hands or move the camera, the wide angle image doesn't move as much as a zoomed image, a zoomed in image or zoomed in lens. That's just the physics of the way it works. So you can imagine you're more zoomed in. Every little movement is a bigger movement in your image. The wider you are, those movements become less of a movement in the image. So even without image stabilization in the lens or in the camera, it still works quite well for walk around video. In addition to that, the little bit of camera shake that you do get if you are using an editor, a video editor, that has the ability to stabilize the footage afterwards, it is very easy to stabilize because the movements are very small. So you can actually get quite smooth shots, quite smooth video that looks very much like it was shot with an image stabilized lens or a camera with IBIS just by using the image stabilization in your editing. Just because it is a wide angle lens, you can do that. And the other thing I love about this lens is the ability to close focus. This creates some really interesting and fun images where you can make the thing in the foreground, whether it be a shell or someone's face or someone holding out their hand, you can make that thing seem big and everything else sort of goes away from it. The other thing is you don't get barrel distortion with this lens or very minimal barrel distortion. That means that the things in the frame, although things that are more in the distance will sort of come together like this, they won't be straight up and down, they won't curve in a barrel like you would get with sort of more of a fisheye effect. So they call that a rectilinear image. So when you get that close focus, all the things in the distance are kind of going off more on parallel straight lines. They aren't sort of barrel distorting, which creates a really cool effect. The fact that the lens is also rectilinear makes it quite a good architecture lens, city lens, can be a real estate lens. I know a lot of people who got started in real estate using this lens. So it is a quite versatile lens. It, it, the 12 millimeters is a great wide focal, wide focal length. And the fact that the image is rectilinear really gives you a lot of options with what you're gonna do with those images. Now for me, this lens almost perfectly represents what we're trying to do on this channel, which is to get the best in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. So if this is the type of thing you're into, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.